and gentlemen, we'd like to call the board of the regular city commission meeting for Tuesday, February 15, 2022. Please have roll call. Commissioner Drosky. Here. Commissioner Lunak. Here. Commissioner Juarez. Here. Vice Mayor Preston. Here. Mayor Gans. Here. If you'd have everyone please stand for the moment of silence and our pledge of allegiance. I ask all of you to please keep in mind uh, yesterday marked the anniversary of the uh, Arbola uh, incident at Parkland. You know, we can remember all of those that we lost from that time. <coughs> Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If we can have approval of the City Commission meeting minutes for the regular City Commission, commission meeting of February 1st, 2022. So moved. Second. Motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? We have acknowledgement of our city board meeting minutes for the Hillsborough Inlet District meeting minutes of November 15th, 2021. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by the vice mayor, second by Commissioner Parnas. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Approval of our agenda for February 15, 2022. Motion to approve. Second. Motion from the Vice Mayor, second by Commissioner Barnett. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, I'm clerk. Our members of the public wishing to divide on our strength tonight's meeting. Three minutes will be divided. However, we want additional notes. We'll be granted on the very least. Anyone can enter an online Facebook video. Let's scroll down to the bottom of the screen. Thank you. Um, I, I would like to add, I know we have a public, we have two public hearings. One is the second reading, and then we have a public comment. After that, if it's possible, uh, Commission, um, if there's no polls for our consent uh, items, I would like to go ahead and move up the last item that we have, because I know we have a lot of people here for that. Um, item number 14, does anyone have an issue with that? If there are no polls for our uh, consent items, I do. Uh, you have a poll. If you have a poll, that's okay. We'll, just go, we'll, we'll go through it as, as we have it. All right. Okay. Good evening. Anthony Soroka, City Attorney. Uh, item number one on tonight's agenda is a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach, Florida, supporting the expansion of both Deerfield Beach Express 1 and 2 community shuttles for Saturday services, approving the First Amendment to the Interlocal Agreement with Broward County for community shuttle services to re reflect a funding decrease, reflect an increase in service hours and days, and amend the vehicle list, authorizing execution of the First Amendment, providing for implementation and effective date. This is a public hearing. Thank you. Uh, City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this, uh, this item is required to be a, a public hearing for uh, Broward County. Um, this was before you previously, but uh, they informed us that they needed this to be uh, done via public hearing. So it's, it's back before you. The essence of the item and the subject of it really is to, um, what, as, as the city attorney said, uh, decrease the, the funding. Um, however, realize that in previous years, up before uh, the surtax, the funding level for uh, this was, was much less, it was around uh, $20 per hour. Uh, when the surtax kicked in, they 
bumped that up to $58 an hour. And then Broward County came back and did an, an audit of the entire community bus shuttle system, not only for Deerfield Beach, but for all, I believe it's 16 in total uh, community bus shuttle services that are done throughout uh, the county by various municipalities. And they looked at what the true uh, cost is uh, for, for operating that uh, commuter bus shuttle service. So the, the amount now is at $48 an hour. So that's what the funding decrease uh, reference is there. Uh, the, the reference to reflecting an increase in the service hours and days is those Saturday bus shuttle ser services that we now provide. And the amended vehicle list is just a reflection of the updated list of vehicles that we currently have in our fleet that service the community bus uh, service. Thank you. Commissioner, do you have any comments before uh, I open to the public? Not seeing any. Uh, does anyone from the public care to comment on this item? Madam Clerk, has anyone written in? Okay. See anyone online or here in the audience and get closer to the public then? Commission? Uh, Commissioner Parnas? I am old for public transportation. It takes cars off our roads. And this shuttle service means there will be less cars on the road. So I am supporting it and I'm urging the commission to support it. Thank you. Um, the Saturday service is based on the needs that we have in our community and based on feedback from residents of places like the Palms, which is the vital service for them. So yeah. I, I also encourage approval of this item. Can we take that as a motion then from the Commissioner Parnas? Absolutely, motion to approve. Second. Motion from Commissioner Parnas, second by Vice Mayor Preston. Uh, we have roll call, please. Commissioner Jasky? Yes. Commissioner Woodard? Yes. Commissioner Yes. 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 Item number two is an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach, Florida, adopting an amendment to the city budget for the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2022, approving supplemental appropriations and budget transfers to various funds and reducing appropriations to the Disaster Recovery Initiative Grant Fund by $108,000 and the 2000 Bond Fund by $91,160, as set forth in the attached Exhibit A, Providing for conflict, severability, and an effective date. This is second reading. Thank you. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. This is second reading of the uh, mid year budget amendment. Uh, the city staff did um, <clears throat> conduct a, a public workshop as well as individual meetings with the commissioner. We provided a presentation uh, during the first reading, and I'm happy to address any questions uh, that the commission or the public may have at this time. Thank you. Uh, Commission, do you have any questions before we open to the public? Yeah. Okay, I don't see any. Uh, Madam Clerk, has anyone written in? I don't see anyone online. Is there anyone from the public who care to uh, discuss this item? Okay, I'm going to close it to the public then. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Commissioner Farnes, second by Commissioner Hudak. We have roll call, please. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. This needs to be, yes, roll call. Thank you. Commissioner Jackson? Yes. Commissioner Hudak? Yes. 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 We are now at the public comment portion of tonight's agenda. Persons addressing the commission shall so state his or her name and address and may speak for three minutes unless extended for one additional minute by the mayor. This is the time of the agenda for public comment on items that are not currently on the agenda. If you have public comment on an item that's on the agenda, the time to do that is after the agenda item is called and the public comment period is open for that item. And as a reminder, no comments shall be made related to the personal life or personal qualities of any person. No language which should offend persons of ordinary sensibility shall be permitted. Thank you. Is there anyone from the public to care to comment tonight? Perfect time, come on up. Yeah, I'm trying to perfectly. Okay. I didn't have to stand up again. It's grand entrance. We won't start the timer until you're at the mic. You just need your name and address for the record. Okay. This wouldn't be a meeting without the speaker. Yes, you can make it up and speak. I'm sorry. That's all right. Great. Uh, thank you for waiting for me. Uh, I would like to say, uh, so, ABK Tanner, 111 Southeast Fifth Avenue, 
out of Canada way here no much farther. Uh, I would like really first to convey a message from uh, not here, constituency and all of you, how much people enjoy the Zoom meetings. People that might not be able to come can come to their computer. Me, not so much. Uh, they, uh, I've tried, but I'm not really good at that, but I like to be here where I can watch and see and let you know I care. And, and that was uh, something I've really tried for several weeks to remember to tell you. Uh, another, I'm so glad that we're able to have our annual celebration, Pioneer Days or Founders Day or whatever we call it. Um, to celebrate our city. So as you see, uh, actually that, that that holiday or that celebration has been here in Deerfield as long as I have, exactly. So uh, I'm really glad to see us doing it this time. It was created to do it with the art show because uh, I know people count on seeing the art show too. So whoever thought, of, all of you that thought of that, what a good idea. And uh, I, I hope to continue our beautiful weather that we've had because then more people will come. But unfortunately, the next day. But uh, the wind's a little much, you could turn that down. And I, I'm looking to see if my friend is on. But anyway, that's all I'm going to talk about. Other than to say once again, I'm really proud to live in here. Thank you very much, Amy K. I won't look for a motion to include the weather for this week. So <laughs> take that to be considered. Um, yes, would you like to come on up? Peggy hey, Ross, 103 Northeast 19th Avenue. Okay. Um, I'm concerned a condominium on 19th Northeast 19th Avenue. Riverfront South is apparently being sold to become an Airbnb. It's 12 units, and um, I believe it might be pretty far along because I think some of the people have already been asked to. But my concern is 12 units becoming it's one bedroom, one bath. That's a motel to me, but it's not an Airbnb. Um, so I don't know exactly how to proceed, what to do. Um, so I guess this is the first, <coughs> first step of your part home, if there's anything. We'll find, out if that true. What? we'll find out if that rumor's true. What? We'll find out if that rumor's true. I'm pretty sure it is, but yes, I still love your feelings. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Ross. Anyone else from the public care to comment? Yes, come on up. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. You can take down your mask if you like it. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I think I can hear you. There you go. Okay, thank you. I'm really nervous. Thank you. Just your name and address for the record. Okay. Mary Dostra and my sister Lima Dostra. 1400 Southwest of Gavin Way. It's a temporary address right now. We stay in the hotel. Um, thank you for this opportunity to be able to speak to you all in the record uh, concerning housing prices of extremely too high. Singers and others that are on a fixed income, and we've been looking since December, and we're not fortunate enough to have a tenant at this point. We could have been a resident. We come at the mercy of the, you all to see if there's a program or anything that will be able to assist to decrease the prices or to direct us in the right path. We can be able to use ourselves to help and move forward into a better We can make sure staff gets with you and see if we can provide some assistance for you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Very very good evening. Evening. Thank you. Uh, Mr. City Manager, can we have staff? Is there anyone else from the public who care to comment on this item? Or not this item, just public comment? I don't see anyone online. Uh, clerk, has anyone written in? Okay. I don't see anyone else. I'm closer to the public then. Okay. We are now on consent board appointment. There's one on there. Um, it's okay with you, Mayor. I'm going to read it into the record. Yes. Item number three, resolution of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach, Florida, appointing Annette Mitchell as a regular commissioner of the Deerfield Beach Housing Authority to fill an unexpired term and providing an effective date. Okay. 
Commissioner, is there any comments on this? This is uh, my appointment. I ask for your support to reappoint uh, Ms. Mitchell. We're actually moving her into this, uh, this particular uh, position, which is the same position she's had for just her residency has changed. Um, she was a member based on the fact that she was living in one of the uh, um, housing facilities. That has changed, but I would still like her to remain on this board which she's allowed to do in this position. Yes. I'll make that motion. Second. Uh, I have a motion to second. Is there anyone from the public that would care to comment on the side? I don't see anybody here. I don't see anyone online. Okay. We close it to the public. Uh, we have a motion in the second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? It passes unanimously. Okay, we are now at consent agreements and expenditure requests. Items, item numbers four through 13 are on consent. Mm -hmm. Vice Mayor, I know you've had a poll. Do you want to try to put the poll? Number five. Okay. Is it a poll? Commissioner Drosky, Commissioner Goodak, any polls? No, sir. Thank you, Commissioner Parnas. Yeah. Okay. I think we, we can do. Is there anyone from the public that here would like to comment on items four through 14? We'll exclude five for now since that's going to be pulled. 13, man. Excuse me, 13. Four through okay. 13. Uh, four through 13. I'm not seeing anyone. Is there anyone online or anyone's right now? Okay. If it's the commission's will, we can do all of those items except for five as a single presentation. Is that all right? Yes. Okay. You, you, you need a motion. One? You need a motion. Uh, no. No, okay. sir. Excellent. We have a motion to approve from Commissioner Parnas. Second. second. We have a second from Vice Mayor Preston. Uh, we have roll call, please. Commissioner Drossy? Yes. Commissioner Yes. 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 Um, item number five. Item number five. Item number five is a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach, Florida, approving the settlement agreement and release with Endo Health Solutions Inc. and Endo Pharmaceuticals Inc. related to the opioid litigation, authorizing execution of the settlement agreement, providing for implementation and effective date. Um, and if it's okay with you, I can get a brief description of this if you'd like. Yeah. Okay. So um, you may recall that you know a number of cities and governments throughout the country have uh, filed a multi-district class action lawsuit against opioid pharmaceuticals and distributors. Um, this city uh, is one of those litigating participants and you uh, had approved previously execution of a memorandum of understanding to join Florida and the Florida plan so that when the state of Florida enters into settlements, you can go ahead and proceed and enter into those settlements and receive for money from the city. We ha you have seen a few of these previously, like Jensen, this is another now um, pharmaceutical company that Florida has entered into a, a tentative settlement uh, on, and this is your authorization to approve the agreement. And I believe the uh, estimate provided by the Florida Attorney General, it's in the face sheet, I wanna say it was around uh, approximately 17,000 to the Deerfield Beach. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Um, Vice Mayor, you pulled this, any questions? No, I don't have any questions, Mayor. Uh, as I was going through the backup, um, I think that we all are kind of aware of the opioid problems that plague our neighborhood, actually plague uh, our nation. Now, we were supposed to get uh, specifically, actually, according to the back of $16,700. And rather than that, just go into the general fund, I was going to ask the commission if they would take the $16,000, uh, which is not a lot of money, and let's create a um, a uh, intervention program from the city that deals with um, signs and symptoms of opioid overdose uh, prevention, um, treatment, uh, even dealing with suicide. Um, it's not a lot of money, and if we were to take that money and put it back into the community to help people uh, suffering, um, my son is a paramedic for. Uh, Broward Chair, and uh, there are constant, constant uh, calls related to opioid uh, 
overdose, but people are dying. And so if the commission was amenable, I would like to see that money um, set up to do an intervention program. Thank you, Commissioner Bussner. Um, I know part of the impact that we've had as a city as far as the dollar amount has cost us. I know we put together, we put forward a lot of money to make sure we had Narcan in a lot of places and the, the cost of that just to kind of deal with some of the issues that we've had with the opioid um, epidemic. I, I don't have a problem doing that. I have a problem doing it on the fly here from the specific where it is, but I love the idea of earmarking that specifically uh, to a spot that will uh, address some of those issues. So I think that's, that's good. How do we go about it? Um, I'm, I'm probably going to look for some direction from the city attorney and the city manager on that. City manager? Yeah, thank you, thank you, Mayor. I, I just wanted to point out too that um, to to um, Vice Mayor Preston's point that the uh, Florida Plan MOU requires that you use this money for certain approved uses along the lines of what you're stating for opioid treatment, training, prevention. Um, so you'll be required to use that money for that. Um, and you do have multiple settlements with with additional monies coming in. Uh, and I think this is this may potentially be the quickest one where you get a check. It's supposed to fund within 90 days. So you have some time to ultimately decide what you want to do with it. Let me point that out. One of the things, Mayor, that I was looking at is that uh, in that intervention, uh, the city would go into each district, District 1, District 2, 3, and 4, and um, give a positive presentation on how people may be able to receive some help. Because there's, uh, again, um, an extraordinarily high number of people that have lost loved ones and still when you talk to them they just still have issues about where to go how to deal with this and so um, uh, i'd like to see something done in each district thank you vice president anyone from the public do carry comment on this item not seeing anyone in the audience and see anyone online <coughs> no one's written in i'm going to close it to the public uh, with the limitations that we have on this on this money and where it can be allocated towards, uh, can we give staff maybe some direction to come back with us and let us know how it's going to be used? Absolutely. Okay. Is that all right? Yes, Mayor. And, and, and knowing what uh, the limited uses of the, of the funding is, and at this point, not knowing what the total amount will be, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking just along the same lines as uh, Commissioner Preston. And I, and I know that we have many community partners out there who have um, existing programs that I, I would like to also e explore so we can do the exact intent that uh, Commissioner Preston is, is talking about, but with resources that already exist. Excellent, thank you. Is that our okay. All right, we're looking for a motion on this. I'll make that motion. Go ahead, Dan. We have a motion from the Vice Mayor. Is that a second from you, Commissioner Parnas? Motion is second. Um, we have a uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Jostin. Yes. 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 Item number 14 is an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach, Florida, approving the Eighth Amendment to the Lease Agreement between the City of Deerfield Beach and the Florida Atlantic Research and Development Authority, authorizing an extension of time for the development of four acres of the Florida Atlantic Research and Development Authority project in the City of Deerfield Beach, providing for execution, severability, conflicts, and an effective date. This is first reading, and I believe we have representatives here on behalf of the applicant that are prepared to provide you a presentation. Good evening. Dennis Mealy, 200 East Broward Boulevard, Boulevard now, on behalf of People's Trust. Uh, we, oh, we're already up there. We have some slides. Uh, thank you to the city folk for putting those up there. Um, so uh, on the first slide, you see the location of the site right at the corner of 10th Street and I-95, and then the rest of the area outlined in red is the balance of the FAU Research Park in Deerfield Beach. Can you go to the next slide, please? So just zeroing in on the site, uh, the four-acre site right there at the corner, you see it in red. Can you go to the next slide, please? And this shows the actual fee simple property uh, that was owned by the city of Deerfield Beach within that red line. Outside of the red line is right of way, either for I-95, 10th Street, or uh, 11th Way. Um, so just wanted to zero in and show you uh, the exact property. Uh, before we go further, uh, you will recall, I'm sure, that we were here in May of last year 
for the Seventh Amendment to the lease was approved. And we had hoped that would be the last amendment to the lease. Unfortunately, uh, we are back here today because we realized, looking at what was previously approved, that we needed to make adjustments to the building. Um, and a lot of the presentation I'm going to show you in a few minutes is addressing how that <coughs> building has changed and how it compares to other uh, similarly situated office properties in Deerfield Beach. Can go to the next slide, please. So this is uh, a site plan for the property uh, showing uh, the building in white, uh, the parking in gray, and then all the green areas, of course, as well. Um, the light green is the water retention or dry retention or drainage areas uh, for the property. So the building is uh, slightly over uh, 41,000 square feet. It is the largest building we can build without doing a structured parking garage. And the importance of this issue about surface parking versus structured parking, I'll come back to in a moment. Uh, if we can go to the next slide, please. So uh, these are just uh, some renderings of the building. Uh, this is looking at uh, from the corner roughly of uh, 10th Street and the I-95 ramp. And you see the um, elevated portion of the building, the two-story portion, and the same story portion. Go to the next slide, please. So this is a breakdown of the building itself. As I mentioned, uh, 41,000 square feet and change. About 42% of the building would be occupied by RRT, the Rapid uh, Response Team, which is part of the People's Trust umbrella organization. The other 58% of the building is for other tenants, for people other than RRT. Um, in the first version of this building we had, we had more space for other tenants, but again, it would have required us to build a parking garage. We estimate the cost of that was somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 to 15 million dollars. Um, and <coughs> that's really where the difficulty came and why we needed to come back to you again this evening. Um, so if you're looking at this portion of the site plan and the upper right-hand portion, that is a two-story segment. And the upper left-hand portion, right at the corner of the L, so to speak, is another two-story section. And then the balance in between are one-story sections. The uh, property right at the uh, upper uh, left-hand portion, that two-story portion, that would be where RRT would go, all the way at the other end. At the uh, east end of the building, that other two-story portion, we envision uh, more likely than not in medical use. And then all of the other bays in the building would be for these uh, innovation or new companies starting up uh, that need space, as we talked about last time. So uh, we try to keep that non-RRT space as big as we could and make sure that we make it available. All of the other commitments we made at the time of the Seventh Amendment still hold true in terms of the internships and other employment programs that People's Trust and RRT uh, have been engaged in and we spoke to you about uh, when we were here last year. Um, the one thing that really has changed in, in addition to the size of the building is the financial package. When we were here in May of last year, uh, our total compensation to the city be $200,000, $200,000 paid a certain number of days after the Seventh Amendment was signed, and then the second $100,000 from that uh, agreement uh, would be paid at the time of building the building. We've totally redone that now. $100,000 we already paid, of course, is already paid, and the city has it, and you keep it. The way we've structured the balance of the payments, uh, if this is approved on second reading, then I think it's five business days or some amount like that, we would pay $1.1 million. And then at the time of building permit, we pay another million dollars. And at the time of CO, we pay another million dollars. So the total compensation would be $3.2 million. Now, we didn't just come up with these numbers out of the air. Uh, we had an appraisal done. And I, if I can, uh, Mr. Mayor, I have a couple of other people that would speak as well. Absolutely. And at the appropriate time, I'd like to introduce them. Uh, but so uh, in coming back to you from last year to this, what has changed? The building got smaller, but the compensation package got much bigger. Of course, I know you all know this FAU Research Park lease that's been in effect for a number of years. Generally, 
uh, there is not money coming to the city from these other uh, leaseholds that would come there. In this case, there is, and it's a significant number. Um, you can go to the next slide, please. So this is just showing you another uh, vignette of the building, uh, so you can see what it looks like. And I, I promise I'm almost done with slides. You can go to the next one, please. So this is our schedule. And what you will notice, if you look at the schedule that we had last year when we were here, this is the same a number of months from the time the Eighth Amendment of the uh, lease of extension is approved, then that starts day one uh, in our process. And then um, everything follows from there. Same amount of time that we had before to achieve a building permit, same amount of time that we had before to finish the building CO. Obviously the start time is different because we were approved in May of 21, and here we are now in February, March of 22. So that amount of time has been pushed back. But once we start, it'll be the exact same amount of time to get the building permit and to get the CO. Um, we can go to the next slide, please. So before I, I introduce um, the appraiser who we work with, Walter Duke, I want to just go over a couple of uh, factors here. So when we first started this discussion, uh, we had done an appraisal to try to determine the value of the property uh, if the FAU research park lease remains in effect or the value of the property if the lease goes away. Now, the FAU research park lease would expire on March 15th of 2022, unless it's extended. And we know that if the lease is not extended, then the property, goes, the city is the fee simple owner, but there would be no longer a lease encumbering the property, and the city could do what you want to do with it. If you want to build a municipal use, of course, you have every right to do that. If you wanted to sell the property for development, of course, according to your charter, you would need a referendum. And I believe according to your uh, property disposition ordinance. I'm not sure if I'm using the right name, but I know that not too long ago you adopted an ordinance to set a procedure if you're going to sell a property involving RFPs and competition and that sort of thing. So um, what we're measuring here is what would this property be worth if there is no, more, no longer an FAU research park lease and you could build or sell or, or do what you want to do with it. Our appraiser came up with a number of 2.9 million. And that is based on building a building of about 40,000 square feet. The city's appraiser came up with a different number. I believe it was about 6.5 million. And the real difference was only one thing. Both appraisers appraised the property as if it would be worth $65 per square foot of building area. So you look at how much of a building could you build, got the number of square feet, Multiply it by $65, that gives you a number. Our appraiser was looking at a number of about 40,000 square feet. That's how we came up with 2.9 million. The city's appraiser was looking at a building of about 100,000 square feet. And that's how we came up with 6.5 million. Now, the 100,000 square foot number comes from the plat note. That's what the plat note says today. You build up to 100,000 square feet of research and development building. And so you really think about that more like an office building, I guess, because research and development buildings is generally a category. And what we found is we just don't see that level of development for a property of this size being likely on this property. So before um, I uh, introduce Walter, we had the uh, CBRE uh, real estate uh, company do an analysis for us of all the office building complexes in Deerfield Beach. And the folks at CBRE who did this specialize in brokerage for office buildings. So if we could go up, oh, there it is. So this map shows the 26 office complexes in Deerfield Beach. Now you'll notice one that is not included. It doesn't include the JM family campus because JM occupies their own buildings. They don't lease space to other people. Whereas these other office buildings that are on here are buildings where an owner might be there for part of the building but otherwise it's leased for third parties, or it may just be owned by a real estate company, and it's all leased to different people. So if we can go to the next slide, I'll show you the chart that goes with the map. So these are the 26 complexes. Uh, you'll see the name of the complex, you see the address. Um, you're probably familiar with a lot of them just from looking at the names and addresses. So you'll notice of these 26 buildings, 
there's five that are highlighted in yellow because those five have some structured part. They have something they have some surface and structure, but they have some structure. So if you look at them, the first one is the Conover building, which is on the north end of Fairway Drive. And you notice that they have a healthy amount of uh, garage spaces. They have 114 total spaces, 66 are surface, and the balance of almost 60 are in a garage. Uh, 800 Fairway Drive, also the north end of Fairway Drive near the Conover building. And you see that they have a pretty substantial amount of garage space. Uh, the next one you see is the Hillsborough Commons, which is a project I've actually been working on for quite some time now. And you see they have some structured part. And then Hillsborough Center 5, they have some. Then the last one is the Atlantic Pavilion. And you notice that they only have 18 spaces in the garage. That's tucked under under a building. Our point is that the overwhelming predominance of office buildings in the city of Deerfield Beach are surface park. And why is that important? difference between structured parking and surface parking. Because structured parking costs so much more to build, you have to be sure that you can get the rent to be able to afford to pay for that structured parking. It's the same thing you see on, on multifamily developments too, where you'll see five-story apartment buildings with all surface parking, because if you put in structured parking, you have to charge a lot more rent. Why are we concerned about this? Because this is our competition for the space that RRT will not use themselves. For the 58% of the building that would be leased to other parties, we're gonna be competing with the other office buildings on the sheet. And if we had a $15 million or $12 million parking garage, we wouldn't be able to compete on an equal footing and charge the kind of rent that we think we would have to charge in order to attract tenants. Uh, if I could, uh, Mayor, I'd like to introduce Walter Duke who is an appraiser uh, of long standing in the community. Uh, and I'd like him to, to talk about the appraisal he did and a little bit of a comparison for the appraisal that was done by the city. And Walter, if you could, when you introduce yourself, if you tell the commission a little bit about your background. Sure, my pleasure. Uh, good evening. Uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners, City Attorney, City Clerk, and City Manager. Uh, it is indeed my pleasure to be here tonight to hear in front of you. I had the pleasure of going uh, before this board uh, before, I believe, the last time was during the code, uh, which turned out fantastic. I said, Lord, done a great job like that. Um, as Dennis mentioned, I am a commercial real estate appraiser, and uh, People's Trust folks did uh, engage our firm to conduct an appraisal along the four acre property that Dennis was pointing out on the screen. As he pointed out, too, we did two scenarios one as uh, under the lease that it currently exists, uh, which would be picnic in office and research type of use, and then the other would be sort of a hypothetical use as if you run around the lease and get away with that, took it through the public process. So there's no money on commercial use because there's no way of really knowing that at this time. And so the others approved it and we of course approved it as well. Um, just quickly on my background, I, I've been uh, appraising properties in Broward County since 1985. Our firm has been here since 1975. During that time, we probably appraised over a thousand commercial properties in Deerfield Beach. And uh, it's been an amazing to watch Deerfield Beach. Deerfield Beach grows since the mid 80s to where it is now. It's just absolutely unbelievable. I should also mention to you as well that uh, I also served a uh, term as mayor of Dania Beach and also commissioner of Dania Beach. So I have certainly great appreciation for your service and the decisions that you make on a daily basis here in the city. Um, so if I may, I would just sort of like to lay out just quickly, uh, not in a, in a long way at all, just the, the, how I approach the appraisal, the difference between the two appraisals, just to give you the information that I think I would want if I were in your shoes to make a, an informed decision. And as Dennis mentioned, um, the, the, the city had an appraisal done by Jonathan Whitney. And I will tell you, Jonathan Whitney is a fantastic appraiser. He's a good guy. I knew his dad. I knew him. He does a great job. We can do business together. I refer business to Jonathan. And he's a good appraiser. So certainly no quarrel with that. Um, and what he was asked to do was appraise the property as he sees fits. And what he saw was that he would appraise it based on the maximum development on the four acres, which is 100,000 square feet of office. And as Dennis mentioned, 100,000 square feet of office, of course, would require structured parking. And so if you look at a, a parking ratio of four per thousand, that's 
a 400 space parking garage and at $30,000 of space. That's about a $12 million proposition to build the parking garage. And, and I'll get back to that in a bit. Taking into consideration the, the, the recent tribulations that the applicant has made to, to, to try to feasibly design an 80,000 square foot structure on the site with structured parking and looking at the market, much like Dennis did in CBRE in terms of what does this market generally consist of and what does it generally uh, attract and, 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 and is developed here. And, you know, I came to the conclusion that given all of those factors, that about a 40,000 square foot building are roughly about what the what the applicant has proposed seems like a reasonable four area ratio on this property. That's about 40%. And um, it, it seemed to be reasonable to me. Uh, it is consistent with what I'm seeing out there with regard to the costs associated with structured parking and the pause in the office market and the post pandemic economy. So you've got two appraisals. You've got a city appraisal of 100, let's, let's just call it the 100,000 square foot appraisal at 6 million five at $65 a square foot times 100,000. And then you've got my appraisal, which is the same $65 a square foot, but at 40,000 square feet. So it's just a smaller building footprint, but it's the same indicator. And I didn't review the city's appraisal. And again, like I mentioned, I have great respect for Jonathan. He's a fantastic appraiser. But one thing that sort of jumped out at me in that appraisal that really wasn't addressed or covered was that there was really no mention at all um, about the impact of a $12 million parking garage that would be required to build a 100,000 square foot building. And so, you know, I'll leave that to you. But to me, if you have two identical sites and one requires a $12 million parking garage and one doesn't, you know, there's got to be some sort of impact to the underlying land value as well. So it, it, at the end of the day, you know, I really felt that the likelihood of a 100,000 square foot facility on this property in this market at this location just seems very unlikely. And there's really three reasons why I came to that conclusion. Number one, the development of this size just isn't feasible uh, due to the cost of the parking garage. As I mentioned, the applicant's architecture and construction professionals went through a number of gyrations and certainly they wanted to max that side out. Most developers seem like they normally do, but not always, not always. Usually sometimes it's market driven as well. So even though you can build a thousand units on a property in a multifamily, let's just say maybe the market density and the, and the setbacks and the zoning, you only end up at 500. So it isn't always that you max out the density at every property. Um, so when you talk about these guys trying to build an 80,000 square foot vertical office building, the parking garage, it just was too expensive for them. It just didn't work out. It didn't pencil out. And I would also point your attention to, and I don't know if the city's appraisal is in the backup, but on one of the comments of one of the land sales, the 100,000 square foot appraisal, land sale four, and I quote, in the comments of the sale write-up, we, when we do appraisals, we, we have a table of sales and then we have like write-ups of those sales that sort of describe in more detail the, the, the details surrounding the transaction. And sale number four, and I quote, it says, site plan approved for 81,892 square feet of office, but this was not economically feasible. After interviews with a representative of the buyer, the office project only appears feasible when developed without a costly parking structure and reduced office size to around 60,000 square feet to allow for more surface parking. Again, very standard in today's market, particularly with the rise of cost and inflation as it is these days. So in that same write-up, the, the appraiser, the city's appraiser noted that for a surface parking lot, the land price was 6250 per building area square foot. But if there was gonna be a structured parking requirement on the site, it dropped all the way down to 4580 square foot. So that sort of takes into account the extra costs associated with building the building on the parking garage. You can only pay so much for the land, so the land price drops. So I, I think that would sort of be my number one point as to why I didn't look at it as 100,000 square foot building because it just wasn't feasible. Number two, Dennis touched on this a little bit, but. The site really doesn't, when you look at the four and a half acre site, it really doesn't meet the basic criteria of a 100,000 square foot corporate headquarters facility. Uh, when I look at the comparables in the 100,000 square foot report done by the city, I see comparable sales that are located next to major demand generators. For example, Holy Cross Hospital was one sale, Boca Town Center was another sale, Daniel Point Mega Mixtures facility where Spirit Airlines put, put their headquarters. 
Fort Lauderdale International Airport, which is near where Spirit put their headquarters as well. And then, of course, the Gordon Super Regional Mall, where FDL put their headquarters. So, you know, you see a pattern develop of corporate headquarters that develop near major demand generators, or things like airports or malls or hospitals. So I don't really see that on this site. So as I analyze the property and I try to determine what is the reasonable highest of issues for this property, you know, that to me told me that it's probably not a hundred thousand square foot corporate headquarters. It doesn't fit the site criteria. And then third and finally, and, and again, Dennis touched a little bit on this with the CBRA presentation, a hundred thousand corporate head, square foot corporate headquarters is a unicorn in the Deerfield office beach, uh, office market, Deerfield beach office market, excuse me. Um, and as such, the 100,000 square foot appraisal presents only one corporate headquarter land sale in Broward County since 2016. So it, it just sort of highlights the fact that 100,000 square foot building sales don't occur very often. Our sites to develop 100,000 square foot, they're just, they're just kind of rare by their nature. So when you look at the fact, I called Marty Kerr's office and I said, how many qualified commercial transactions have there been in Broward since 2016. And they told me about 3,000. So it just sort of underscores the rarity of 800,000 square foot corporate headquarters. And uh, as Dennis mentioned, outside of JM family, there are no 100,000 square foot headquarters in the market. In fact, there's not a lot of 100,000 square foot headquarters in Broward County in general in most cities. So it's not just Deerfield Beach. Another thing that I noticed as I came to my decision in terms of the size I used for my valuation, I, I looked at the fact that the average Deerfield Beach office building size is about 45,000 square feet. So this fits. It, it's consistent with this market. It's consistent with what others have built in this market, and it's consistent, it's consistent with what, what is feasible. Um, and I think another point that, that I considered, and, and, and very possibly the city's appraiser may not even have this information, and that happens sometimes. When you work for the applicant, you sometimes have it available more information to you than the city's appraisal. And I've been, I work with a lot of cities and I've been on both sides. But one thing that struck out to me was that for almost two or three years, the applicant has tried to put a corporate headquarter on a beautiful site right on I-95 in between their headquarter building and their structured parking garage, which by the way, is phenomenal. It's probably one of the best parking garages I've ever seen. So you got a situation with a beautiful I-95 fronted site that's ready to go with the parking <laughs> already in place and they still can't land a, a corporate headquarter tenant. So I just think it sort of lends to me the unlikelihood that that's going to occur when it hasn't occurred already on a better site along 95. The other thing I would point out in closing is that generally speaking in this post-pandemic economy, Florida has been a huge winner. Real estate is on fire. Residential real estate is on fire. Commercial real estate is on fire. There's no doubt about that. We see that on the day-to-day. -day. Restaurants are busy. Hotels are getting busy, and that's fantastic. And, that, and that's fantastic. We all live here, work here, and we want the best for Broward County. But I think what we're seeing is a real slowdown in the office market. For three years in Broward County, we've had negative absorption. And what we're seeing is corporate headquarter relocations really occurring in Miami and Palm Beach. And I think one of the main reasons that you're seeing that is because in Miami and Palm Beach, you have 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 million dollar homes where the CEO is going to relocate and live. We don't have that here in Broward. In Broward, we're more of a, 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 an affordable county, if you will, from that standpoint. We don't have residents that are 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 million dollars necessarily. There's some beautiful ones on the ocean up here. But that's, that's really a small amount of the inventory in Broward County. So as a result, we're seeing most of the corporate relocations going to Palm Beach and going to Miami-Dade. And most of them are in smaller boutique buildings. So I think when you add all of those things up, you have a valuation that the city has performed for 100,000 square feet or five million six, or excuse me, six million five, which really doesn't bake into the consideration that you've got to build a $12 million garage. How the appraiser would do that or how they would handle that, how they handle that, it's tough to say. But you can't help but think that it would have some negative impact on the land, much like the comparable land sale for that I referenced in the city's appraisal, which was about a $15 foot difference. So I think at the end of the day, I just think the probability of 100,000 square foot building is very low. And the probability of a 40 to 45 to 50,000 square foot building is very, very high. And so from that standpoint, I think, you know, as I view the property, that is the most likely highest on issues in this property under reasonable near term market conditions for a, a surface part of 40 to 50,000 square foot office building. With that, I'll close. I'm available for questions. I appreciate your time and consideration and your service to the city. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Uh, Dennis Mealy again on behalf of our business trust. So, just a couple of quick things. I know we've thrown a lot of numbers out tonight. 
so that I guess this is a numbers driven type of a thing, but separate from the numbers for just a minute. So People's Trust has been in the city now, I believe, for seven years. Um, there will be uh, only private use that has come in to uh, the FAU Research Park in Bluefield Beach, and we'd like to do more. Um, you heard Walter's description about the various values of the property. And one thing also that I think you have to take into account is if we do this, then you are certain the money you will be, will, will be receiving, 3.2 million, this will happen quickly. Our schedule requires us, if this is approved tonight and at your next meeting, to immediately start our site plan process and go as fast as we can to, towards building permit and construction. If you let the lease expire, then of course the property is the city's in fee simple. If you want to build a municipal building, you know, there's no restriction on that. If you want to sell it, of course you have, you have to see if you're going to have interest from the types of uses you want. Um, the city's appraiser mentioned that B3 zoning would be the best way to go, but then he said, but let's zero in on a corporate office. Because B3 could also include all kinds of other stuff too, retail and everything else. So will you get uh, offers to build what you want to see on this property? I assume that being office. And will they want to build a big enough office that they would pay you a lot more money than we're paying? So, you know, you've got to look at, will you get those offers? Will they be as big as you think they will be? Will the voters approve it through a referendum? And all of those things are going to take time. And there's a lot of contingencies, there's a lot of, what happens if, whereas with what we're proposing tonight, uh, you know what you're getting, you know when you're getting it, you know how much it is. Um, so we want to come here, we want to create the jobs, uh, and we want to uh, build there and, and continue as a corporate citizen of Deerfield Beach. If you have any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Madam Clerk. your district you want to go first i didn't see your hand up so i guess you should. <laughs> thank you uh mayor thank you uh, i would really appreciate the opportunity to speak on this um there are obviously multiple uh, considerations uh, they're coming back for an extension um you know i'm going to support this and there's a reason why i'm going to support it and the reason is number one I have to look at what kind of uh, business uh, dealings have part of been for the city of Deerfield Beach. I was in the initial conversation um, with Mr. Gold before he passed away that the company was overcome. They decided to, to give Deerfield Beach an opportunity, a proper business here. And uh, in my estimation, they've done a very good job. They brought people's trust here. Um, they got involved immediately in the 15th Street uh, project. Um, so they're right across the, the way from Deerfield Beach High School. Um, and, and that made me, you know, feel really good that they wanted to help in the neighborhood where they have a business, see how they might be instrumental in helping out kids. Um, they brought jobs to the city of Deerfield Beach. That's employment. And we have to really appreciate that uh, in, in this climate. They brought jobs and they will bring more. And um, 
the fact that they're willing to make a $3.2 million commitment, I mean, that's real. We could actually talk and speculate about, you know, um, additional monies coming from somewhere else. But it's just that. It's not real. It's just uh, proposed. This is real. Um, I think with the relationship that they've had with the city that they've earned the right to uh, have this extension. And uh, I'm going to support this um, because I feel it's the right thing to do for our community. For the community of Deerfield Beach, our city, and in District 2, I know it has been a positive. And so I would urge my colleagues to support this. Um, you know, I know that there have been, you know, uh, talk about what could be there. Well, we understand in detail what Potter is looking to do, what People's Trust is looking to do on that property and the commitment they've made. Nobody else has made a $3.2 million commitment. And there's another consideration that I would ask the commission to look at. If you got $3.2 million, how long would it take in property taxes before that money would go into the coffers of our city? We don't know what that time frame would be unless we were to look at the building, look at what comes in on an annual basis and then determine. But we're talking about something that's more on an immediate basis, and that's right now. And I think it would be the best thing for the city of Deerfield. So I will be supporting this. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner Hudak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I as well am going to support this. Um, that property has been a vacant piece of land for 25 years. Uh, the thought that there's going to be the Taj Mahal there, um, anybody can put anything that they want in paper uh, and draw something really, really pretty. But you, you have to be realistic on what is going to go in that spot. Uh, you know, appraisals are great, but basically they're worth whatever somebody is going to pay you for your property. A year and a half ago, my house was worth three hundred thousand uh, dollars. The next day, my next door neighbor sold his house for over five hundred thousand dollars to an Airbnb. So, is my house worth three hundred thousand, or is it worth five hundred thousand? It's worth what somebody will pay for it. Uh, this property, like I said, has been vacant for a long time, and we finally have a a, a good community business who is willing to come in here and help develop a property uh, in the city of Deerfield Beach. Uh, to think that there is going to be an 80,000 square foot facility on that property is unrealistic. Uh, when Mr. Neely put up his, prop, his, his 26 listings, uh, not one of them was built in the last 15 years. Uh, and everybody knows what's been happening with regards to businesses uh, and the employees wanting to work remotely, uh, businesses finding that they have um, a lot of real estate that um, they don't need anymore. So the thought that uh, not only is there going to be an 80 square foot facility in this property with a parking garage, uh, the next thought is, is that you're going to find tenants for it. Uh, there's a vacant piece of land right on I-95 next to People's Trust um, with a great parking garage. I've been through it uh, and, and still no takers. So, so to think that uh, this, there, there, there's going to be somebody riding in on a white horse uh, to develop this property is, is, you know, he's here. And it's time we see that and take advantage of this opportunity for the city. So I, I will be supporting this. Thank you. Yes. I have a question. Uh, you're proposing to give us a million dollars, a million more, and a million more, and a million. What are the penalties if on that date the money isn't here? What happens then? Uh, again, Dennis Feely on behalf of People's Trust. Um, you, you might want to ask the city attorney because he's put together a very good memo that explains that if we don't pay and we default, we're out. Okay. If we, pay, if we pay some of the money and we default, you keep the money that we pay. Okay, fine. That that answers my question. 
there is a system set up to pretty much ensure the money's going to be there on time. That's correct. And that will support the prior attack. Mr. Drosky, do you have any comments? I do. I had to just have the clerk unmute me. Sorry about that. Um, I have a different opinion from my colleagues and not to be condescending. Um, I, I think that opinion is myopic, uh, that it's focusing on the here and now versus what could be in the future. And that's why we're elected is to make these tough decisions and to look into the future uh, and to protect the residents of Deerfield Beach. And it's always difficult to look into the, to the future because you're rolling the dice and you're looking at the unknown. Uh, but that's why we're here to make those tough decisions. And what is, what is your vision for the city of Deerfield Beach? <clears throat> now, I can't speak to my colleagues because they've obviously just told me what their vision is. Uh, but I have a very different vision for Deerfield Beach of what this city is <clears throat> and what it could be. And I've always told the candidate applicants that have come before us um, to be bold not Fort Lauderdale bold, but bold in that we can make this a better city and to maximize uh, the very few inches of land that we have left. And so I've always said that this applicant's best argument has been that they can build this property uh, and have it on the tax rolls, you know, while the city plods along through the RFP process and the, and the referendum. I, I, I get that. But again, what is the vision that my colleagues have for Deerfield Beach? My vision is, is, is different. I mean, going from an 80,000 square foot building backwards to a 40,000 square foot building uh, is not bold in my, in, my, uh, in my opinion. It's going the opposite direction. All of the factors that were presented to us tonight as to why we should go with the 40,000 square foot building were present when we approved the 80,000 square foot building. Nothing, is, nothing has changed. And I don't think the residents of Deerfield Beach should have to pay for that, um, for that miscalculation. That's not on the residents. I'm looking at this through the lens of what's in the best interest of the residents of the city of Deerfield Beach long-term, not today. Yes, 3.2 million, Sounds like a lot of money and it could go to a lot of use. I get it. But 3.2 million um, based upon other projects that we could do in the future will be a drop in the bucket. Um, and this, co this commission will be a laughing stock in the future of what could have gone there versus what potentially we are not doing going forward. So let me say, you know, say this is why I think um, that it's worth the roll of the dice going forward and trying to get a different project that we, at least that I envisioned at the beginning of this process. First of all, it doesn't have to be just office space. Um, I understand the market is changing with respect to office space and the COVID pandemic and how people are working, but there's many other uses that that site could be. It could be hotel, uh, it could be medical, uh, it could be some residential or a combination of any of those in addition to office space. So just limiting your argument to office space, I think misses what other opportunities could be out there. Um, second, and I already alluded to it before, is that the 3.2 million could just be a drop in the bucket going forward. That's a one-time payment that the residents of the city of Deerfield are going to, Beach are going to get. Once we get it and spend it, it's gone. Whereas if we were to approve a different potential project that the tax revenue that the city will receive forever, We'll make that 3.2 million pale in, in comparison. And then three is that you have to look at the surrounding area too. Vice Mayor, this, um, this backs up to Mayo Howard Park. You have been a big advocate for that park in that particular area. You know, if this project is done right, you can make that entire corner tie into Mayo Howard Park. You can have such a great vision. You get a Mayo Howard Park in this site tied together. This could be a real opportunity and a real place in the community where people can come together, where we can have events there. Um, I think we're selling ourselves short of what could be done there. Uh, and tying those two elements together is something that we really need to look at going forward. Uh, the fourth thing is, you know, we're talking about the economic conditions today, but I'm betting on the economy getting better over time. 
I'm bet and that this the market will get better, that there will be other opportunities. Um, a lot of the opportunities that didn't happen is because there's a ground lease with the property. If the ground lease is gone, you may get other players, other developers, other opportunities that come forward in the future. I don't think we should say no to those opportunities um, and look short-sighted with this particular project. Fifth is that you also have to consider looking forward. I know it's very difficult to look into the future, but you have to consider everything that's going around with this particular site. So in addition to Mayo Howard Park, you have the improvements that are being made with Southwest 10th Street. Um, that street is going to be very different than what it looks like today. You're going to have commuters coming from every single direction and that site is going to be, I think even more important than it is today. So we need to look at what future conditions are going to be Southwest 10th Street. You're gonna have people coming all the way from Sunrise up Southwest 10th Street um, on the Sawgrass Expressway to this area. This will be a very convenient way for them to come in, to come out, to go north, to go south. This could be a very important, and that, and that site is right at the epicenter of all of this. Um, and so I don't wanna sell us short with all the things that are being done with Southwest 10th Street. So those are the reasons that I think this commission has always been bold until now. Um, I'm a little surprised that my colleagues are getting wet feet going forward because this is a great opportunity that we really have going forward. I'm, there's, this is nothing against people's trust. This is nothing against Mr. Mealy or his firm. This is nothing against Mr. Duke. They all made a great presentation. I met with all of them. They made great arguments. I, I get it, I understand it, but what is the vision going forward? Look at the Pinnell Marina project that we have right across the street here from City Hall. We all told that developer, let's be bold. Let's make that a great project that the city of Deerfield Beach can be proud of. And we did that and we took the citizens concerns into play as well. Look at the elder building just down the road too. We told that developer as well, be bold, you know, and, they're, and, and what they're doing at the project, underground the utility lines there, think outside the box. And there's other opportunities that have not come before us yet that will, that we've told those developers, be bold, have a good vision for the city of Deerfield Beach going forward. And I want to stay consistent to that message going forward. And I think we should, and we're missing an opportunity. It's hard to look into the future and to see what's there. I get it. That's why we're here to make those tough decisions. This isn't anything against anyone. This is what could be going forward. And I'd rather take that risk for the reasons that I said and get something that the city and the residents of Deerfield Beach are gonna be proud of in the future. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Drosky. I, everyone's had a chance to speak. I'm gonna open that up to the public. Yeah. Right. Uh, I'd like Here. to comment real quick, Mr. Mayor. Well, uh, if that's the case, we're gonna let Commissioner Parnas, because he asked first, then we'll have you go next. If that's good, Commissioner Duda. Commissioner Parnas? Yes, my fellow colleague, as the keeper of finance of the city, Commissioner Grodsky, I can't vote to turn 3.2 million down on the hope that the referendum will get passed by the voters on your vision. Boca did that. They turned down a project, so now we're gonna go to referendum. Guess what? The voters said no, and they're stuck with the property. I don't want to see that happen. Three point million dollars. We're not talking about a buck and a half here. And we set up that if the money isn't paid on time, whatever we've received up front, we keep and the project is dead. We put in safeguards. This is a time when money counts. This land has been vacant for 25 years. We have a chance to pick up over $3 million and have a new business, corporate headquarters, which is important to the city. We have a few corporate headquarters here. JM Family is one of them. It means jobs, it means income. It means new development. This is why I support it. Only because I'm thinking of we know we got hit with the pandemic financially. How long will that go on? I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not about to turn a project down 
that's going to put money in our coffers and jobs for our people in a spot that's been vacant for 25 years off the highway. If I were going to build a new Hilton or Marriott, I certainly wouldn't build one with the back view window is I-95 for a hotel. Maybe a small three-story hotel with good shades on the, the back windows. But I can't see a luxury hotel going up when we have the beach, when we have other properties, other than looking at 95. I say we take the money, we have safeguards, and we don't know what the future is going to be. I would love to say, I looked in my crystal ball and it's guaranteed that the growth of the city and inviting corporate headquarters into the city is going to continue. We might. We hope it will. We're all working for it. But is it guaranteed? No. My grandma used to say, a bite in the hand is worth two in the bush. This is a bird in the hand. I think we owe it to the citizens to take the money, develop the, let them develop the property according to what we agreed to, and move on to the next project. That's why I'm supporting it. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Kudak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, Commissioner Droska, I, I hear your words. And to, to say that this commission isn't being bold by looking at this project and realizing that this is the best use for this property. Um, you know, there's a difference between a dream and a goal. And what you presented was a dream. There's, there's no steps towards a specific goal. Oh, it's going to be a hotel. Oh, it could be medical. It could be an 80,000 square foot. Um, you could have it incorporated with, 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 with the park that's over there. Those are all realities. Those, those, those could happen. But the reality is, is those are night, more than likely not going to happen. First of all, to have events. We're building a 30,000 square foot facility less than a mile away uh, for events. Uh, a hotel. There's a hotel across the street. You know, we have to be realistic. Nobody is going to build an 80,000 square foot facility there with a parking garage. It just doesn't make financial sense. I've got an invisible hotel over <coughs> that's been there for 10 years. It looks beautiful, but it's not doing anything. Southwest 10th Street extension is 10 years away. Are we going to wait another 10 years to see what's going to be there? I, I'm sorry, but it, I, I understand your argument, but your argument is filled with fluff. It's filled with hopes and dreams, and that's great, but this is reality. And in reality is, is a 40,000 square foot facility is what's going to be there. It's either going to be there with this builder or hopefully sometime in the future if, if we deny this. But the reality is, is, is you didn't present any vision for it. You just said, well, it's open for vision. It's all pie in the sky. It's, it's wah, wah, wah. I, you know, I, I appreciate your passion. But the reality is, is, is that you, you, you haven't provided any solid facts or any solid vision either. You, you just thrown everything against the wall to see what's going to fit. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hudak. I'm going to open it up to the public at this point. Anyone from the public care to comment on this item? I would imagine we're all out here just to listen. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> be shy or be silent. Uh, Gwen Clark Reed, I see your hand raised online. Go right ahead. One clock read 1430 Southwest Six Way. Well, here we are again back with FAU and the research park. Mayor, I, I hear what Mr. Mealy is saying about what he can put there now. And um, I'm just waiting to see, is it really going to happen? Because we've been at this stage with FAU and this property for so long with so many things coming 
and we get to a point and nothing happens. So as far as I'm concerned, if you vote to uh, go with this tonight, I'm just going to sit back and wait and see. That's the attitude I'm going to take. And I'm telling you right now that we have been at this juncture with this research park and uh, previously, and it failed. So I'm, I'm, you know, as a resident, I, I'm just going to sit back and wait and see what happens at this point. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Katie Freitag. I'm Katie Freitag, 418 Southeast 2nd Street. I would like to see something done in this location. It is a spot that garners definite resources from our community, we could make it something great. Um, I'm not a super huge fan of being bold sometimes, as Commissioner Drosky mentioned, in certain cases, such as the Eller building project, I don't want to see it bold. I don't want to see a six story apartment building, condo slash whatever you wanna call it, built in that spot. The traffic on federal will absolutely. Ms. Freitag, if you could stick to million. this project, that would be great. Yes, yeah, so that's getting to the the issue with the traffic. Traffic on federal will be bad. Traffic on tenth is already bad. Are we going to compound it by putting such a large facility in that spot, compounding traffic? We already have enough traffic in the area that we're trying to divert away from the major roads, such as tenth, Hillsboro sample. We want to divert the traffic away, not add additional traffic to it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else online? Let's see what online. Uh, Madam Clerk, I think you have one item reading to the record. Yes, sir. Ours Chelligan, 109 Southeast Street, your building. The city of Jericho Beach has previously given the use of state on the way to FAU's research. FAU developed their facility with a contract schedule. FAU has also had a four acre plot that it leased for years. City of Jericho Beach received nothing. The development was not completed on time, even though it was a contract deadline. FAU has been granted numerous extensions. The latest proposed lease amendment far more than ever received in the past. After numerous attempts to engage the city mayor and commission and a discussion or debate regarding the variety of subject, I have decided to use the option of submitting questions to the city clerk for submission to the city mayor, manager, and commission in order to get things on the record. Therefore, I am submitting the following question for the city mayor, City Manager and City Commissioners. I, we taxpayers and property owners of Jericho Beach would like to know how the $3.2 million revenue windfall will be allocated from the pending lease agreement with FAU. Many Jericho Beach property owners would like to see the money go into the general fund reserves. We would also suggest additional lease terms to ensure that any funds received by the City of Jericho Beach. Prior to GS failing to meet subsequent timeline milestones will not be forfeited by the city. GS has submitted a revised proposed building plan for the city and has requested an additional extension until January 11, 2023, to obtain a building permit for the development of the additional property and a period of 18 months for obtaining such a building permit to obtain a shell certificate of occupancy or similar permit. So to any further extension to the source control, the extension. FARDA and GS have requested the extension, and GS has agreed to pay the city an extension fee in the amount of $3.2 million, the extension fee, in consideration for the extension. No. Mr. Department of Negotiating Agreement, a cash agreement, 
and the city has negotiated a letter of agreement with TS attached in the PDP, which provides for the expense of the payment of $3.2 million to the city. As follows, $1.1 million has been applied to the state of the city constitution of the Eighth Amendment, $1 million to the city simultaneously with the issuance of the first building permit for the building, and an additional $1 million. I'll let you finish up. It's <laughs> almost done. With an, with an additional $1 million to the city simultaneously with the issuance of a certificate of occupancy for the building. It will prove the extension granted in this ordinance shall terminate and be null and void without any further action if any of the following occur. GS sells to pay the extension fee to the city as provided in the letter agreement. GS sells to acquire the RP's interest in the additional property by January 11, 2023, or if GS sells to obtain a building permit for development of the additional property consistent with the letter agreement. By January 11, 2023, or fails to obtain a shell certificate of occupancy within 18 months from obtaining the building permit subject to the terms of the age of the Thank you. Is there any other public comment that has come in? No? I don't see any other hands raised online. Sure. Okay, anyone here in the public like to comment? Don't be shy. Amy K. Tanner, 111 South East 5th Avenue, over Tanner, right here in Florida. I don't sit where y'all sit because I can't think that fast. But as I sit here and I listen to all this, I was raised in New York, uh, 20 years, a long, a long. But um, I think a couple questions come to mind. How many, what is our ratio to empty uh, office buildings uh, in town? And because yeah, Driving down the road, I see so many for lease, for lease, for lease. And uh, the price, uh, I know, I know people that have relocated because prices have gotten so high. Uh, second thing I thought of, it's going to be right on a, a major thoroughfare, 95, uh, Sawgrass Expressway. Do we think that all the people that are going to work there are going to come from Deerfield? Or maybe they can just hop on the thing, boom, boom, and they're at work in a minute uh, from Sunrise, from Weston. Uh, it's, it's rhetorical. I mean, I don't know what the answers are, but they're questions that made me think when we're going to build something that something else can't go there, uh, how, how necessary is it? Just a question. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Yes. I apologize, Mr. Mayor. I, I told myself I was going to come here and not talk. <laughs> uh, you know, not, you're not talking is something I've never seen. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not disappointed. Right? Um, Bob Bird's on owner of OK Generators 373 North River Avenue. Deerfield Beach. I'm talking as a, a company that's been anchored in Deerfield Beach for 44 years. I sit here and I listen to words like roll the dice, risk, bet, might, could. And as stewards of the people's best interests in Deerfield Beach, what happens if it doesn't, can't, won't, or didn't? I don't think we're here to roll the dice. And, make, and, and say what might happen in the future, I think we're here to make the best the decisions we can make that are in the best interest of the people, the residents and businesses of Deerfield Beach. I'll cut it off at that. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Anyone else from the public care to speak? It's not that hard. Bob did it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just assume everybody's here to watch. So 
I'll close it to the public at this point. Um, I've got a few questions to ask Mr. Mealy. You know, a lot of this presentation has been talking about um, uh, why this is the, you know, what was proposed is the wrong side. My question is, why was that not done originally? You're acting like we should ignore what happened the last time you came. Um, if, if I gave that impression, I apologize. That wasn't my intent. Uh, what I tried to say at the beginning is we did come here in May of last year. And we did propose an 83,000 square foot building. After looking at it, we determined that we didn't think we could make it work based on the need to build a 12 to $15 million parking garage and also our concerns about the ability to, uh, to fill the space that would be uh, leased to third parties. So yes, Mayor, there's no question. We came back here with a different proposal than we had last time. And you want us to believe that since we're talking about boats and trains and fluff, as I've heard quote my colleague, that we're, this proposal will work out differently than what you proposed before. Well, I think the one big difference here, you know, there's an, everybody's talking about sayings they heard. I remember a saying that I always heard when I was a kid, you put your money where your mouth is. So mm -hmm. Shaker who's sitting with her bra. Five day, five business days after this Eighth Amendment is approved, if it is approved, he writes a check to the city for $1.1 million. So if he doesn't do that within five days after it's approved, then he's defaulted and this goes away. Once he pays the $1.1 million, I can't see him walking away. Okay. What is the current research and development that's being done by People's Trust and was proposed at this location? Since we can't look at other occupants in that, we have to depend on what's going in there that we know is going to go in. Right. So uh, People's Trust, as they are today, uh, went through the white paper process with the Florida Atlantic Research and Development Authority. And so has RRT for the proposed use on this property. Uh, the standard is collaboration with the university based on the statute. And any other tenant that comes into this, and the other 58% of the building that I mentioned, will have to go through that same FAU white paper process to make sure that they are a business that would be collaborating with the university. So People's Trust had to do that seven years ago. RRT has gone through that process at the FAU uh, Research Park uh, Development Authority, the white paper that has been approved. And any other tenants that come here will have to do the same thing. How much research and development is being done by People's Trust at the current site that they're at? Now? Well, Mayor, I, and one of the problems with this is the title is Research Development Authority, but the statutory language is collaboration with the. I hope I'm using the right terminology, collaboration. And you know, I guess someone else would be better able to describe that uh, what that collaboration is than me. Yeah, I would love to know. Okay. What it is. Is Andrew that person to answer this? Andrew, if you would, please. And if, I'll stand by in case you have additional questions for me. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Commissioner, Andrew Duffel, 3651 FAU Boulevard, Boca Raton. Um, to, to, if I can perhaps talk a little bit about research and development first in terms of what it really is, um, doesn't always involve white coats and the microscope. Research and development is really anything, any kind of um, inquiry that expands the bounds of human knowledge. So at FAU itself, there's significant research going on, for example, in the College of Business and in the College of Engineering that don't involve white coats and a microscope, but rather um, inquiry into different ways of doing business, different ways of structuring business and what results those have on results, employee health and welfare and so on. So when we look at any company in the research park at FAE, whether it's in Boca Raton or here in, in uh, Deerfield Beach, we ask the company to meet with individual faculty members from the university in a college of their choosing, so their specialty, and there are 10 at, at FAU, to, to figure out which areas they'll work on together and what will that yield. 
Um, and so in the case of People's Trust, uh, on the southern portion of, of this property, there have been significant interactions between the company and the College of Engineering, for example, on in computer engineering and computer science, building systems and databases so that the um, company can better serve its clients and have better results. And so students as well as faculty have undergone or um, undertaken those projects to write that software, to write those programs. So they've had experiential learning as well as the ability to apply using that knowledge for further federal grants and, and other funding sources. With both People's Trust and RRT, there have been significant conversations and a progress made on looking at climate change and sea level rise and how those things affect the insurance market and how homes are built, where they're built, how they should be assessed for risk. And there's been uh, the uh, Center for, for Environmental Studies is based in, in Davie. Their faculty have engaged significantly with People's Trust folks in order to understand what the market players are seeing so that they can inform their own research. They look at things about how foundations are built, what materials they use to build those foundations and so on. And then because this company is in, in the insurance business, they work with the College of Business to, to look at actuarial risk. So the, the faculty is very interested in seeing anonymized data from people's trust and companies like them to understand how they underwrite risk and how those faculty members can inform their students and their own research on how uh, they should be learning the discipline and applying it in the real world. And um, that has or will um, spill over, we expect, into the RRT proposal. And um, in addition, there's the, um, I lost my train of thought, RRT. With what the plan is to have come forward to this new property and the percentage square footage that you're going to use for that currently right now is going to be how much of this? So, uh, Mr. Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Uh, I might be coming back to you. Uh, so the, uh, the building, about 42% would be occupied by RRT, only about 58% that's available for third parties that would have to go through the white paper. So I don't have to do math and type everybody taking their shoes off. What is that? Square footage right there at 58 um, for other tenants. I can give you that in just one second. Thank you. So the uh, total building square footage is 41,036 square feet. The RRT portion is 17,167, and the balance is 23,869. So the RRT would be 41.8%. I rounded it off at 42, and the uh, other Third parties would be 58.2%. I promise about So 20, approximately just under 24,000 square feet for others. For the third parties, yes. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. And I would imagine with the resource, which are the RRT that you're putting in there, there's not a lot of, well, if we go with Mr. Duffel's explanation that it's anything that expands human knowledge, I think that pretty much can apply to almost anything. That's That, to me, is a little... And I'll get to my point of why I think that's an interesting response to, uh, from you. Um, what was it originally that you proposed last time you were here that was going to go for others to use? Um, I, I think the... John, do you recall the percentage? I, I don't recall the percentage. Mixed between office and flex so Was RRT about the same? RRT was about the same. Okay. So, uh, Mayor, RRT... Well, since we, can, we have this project, let's assume it's double. That's what we have. Right, so I, I want to ask you a question. Okay. I think the RRT space in the larger building is about the same amount of space we're showing here now. What has been reduced is the third party space. Okay. John, did I say that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's, what, that's my point. So okay. the, the third party space right now is about 20, just under 24,000. And before it was, let's say, double that previously. Right. Okay. That's probably so that's I, what we're losing. Is the, when we talk about what the future could hold there, what could be there. We are, when this first was presented, and look, it's pretty clear, you guys know, that I was against giving any other expansion extensions we've had. I've been in office since 2009. This is a boondoggle bad deal for the city of Deerfield Beach. It was a gamble that was done and sold to them back in 2000. Is that when we first did this? And this was the referendum? I believe that was done. 
back in 2000. I'm going to read you the exact language that was on the ballot. We talk about how we sell things, Commissioner Parnas, to our residents. And you're worried about a referendum. This is what the language says. Shall the city of Deerfield be permitted to lease property, 21 acres of city property, formerly owned by the Florida Department of Transportation on I-95, the Florida Atlantic University Research and Development Authority for the purposes of building and operating a research and development office slash office park for a lease term or 99 years of rental fee of a dollar per year of, of, of $1 per year. So this was sold to the residents back at this time period, back in 2000, that this is going to be for research and development slash office park. We haven't gotten that all these years later. I've been in the office since 2009. We've seen no movement on this property. The only time that suddenly we get any action of it on it is when it was coming up. When that lease needed to be extended, suddenly there's a lot of action and a lot of interest. All before that, there was nothing. It was a lot of wasted time. Reluctantly, and I believe the reason it was put in to protect the residents is to make sure that once we got to this point in time, it, we realized if it wasn't developed, which I don't think anybody can imagine developed in that time period, but if it wasn't going to be developed, at least it would return back to the residents. That for us to have the ability and not the limitations that we currently have there now and have had for all these years on that property, this was sold to the residents as something completely different than what they're getting. And quite frankly, for the commissioners that are looking to go along with this, I believe you're settled and you're selling short the residents on what they originally intended when they first voted for this. And if you want them to have any faith in any referendums we bring forward in the future, we need to hold true to what the original intent was. And we're far away from that. $3.2 million, very sexy number. That's great. It's wonderful. But you talk about how long it's going to take for us to make that back in Congress. Look at what we've lost in being tied up with yet a city of Deerfield Beach plan that is convoluted and complicated, much like we have with the Cove Shopping Center, much like we have with um, the other shopping center. that We don't own the buildings, but we own the parking lot. These are weird boondoggle deer deals that we've gotten into that have not worked for you. And this is one similar to that. The last time you came before us, I reluctantly gave permission to move forward, my vote to go with it even though it was something that I felt was wrong. The presentation and what was being presented gave me the hope that there was still a chance to fulfill the original promise to the residents of a research and development office space based on the percentage percentages that were given the last time. And yes, it was a small amount of money you were going to give. And I believe you ended up paying some money that you couldn't get back because you did not build it in the time frame that extension was originally given. Is that correct? Um, the two, the uh, one hundred thousand. There was uh, two hundred thousand dollars due on the other extension. One hundred thousand was five business days after it was approved. We paid that. So, so, so you, you've already thrown away a hundred thousand dollars. Well, we hope we didn't throw it away, but we did pay it. And the other hundred thousand would have been due at the time of building for that position. We hadn't gotten that far yet. Okay. I, again, Commission, I, I'm going to tell you. I think we're very short sighted on this. The number sounds. Impressive, but when you look at what we're going to be tied into for the next 80 years, once this is built, the city of Deerfield Beach is stuck what, yet again with whatever this is going to be built in this space for the next 80 plus years. I don't think that's a good <clears throat> deal for the citizens of Deerfield Beach. The size that's going to be remaining for something else to be done to fulfill the original promise of the research and development part of it is too small to be of anything significant. I'll be honest with you, I'm extremely disappointed to sit here and have an appraiser talk about how bad Broward County is really to have people relocate to. Since that goes against everything we've been working for towards with the, with the Alliance in Fort Lauderdale, what we've been working for as an as economic development council in the city of Deerfield Beach, to basically say, look, this is the best you're going to have. You're never going to have any big headquarters moving in here. We're limited with what we have right now. This is it. This lease is a bad deal. It's been a bad deal for the city for a long time. You want to talk about having a vision, Commissioner Hudak, and, and saying this is fluff and this is a reality? I thought the last extension was a reality, and it didn't happen. And I'm supposed to have faith that this is going to move forward and now? We've given three extensions since 2019. 
Every year we get promises that have been unfulfilled. They've already walked away from over $100,000. 1.1 to me is nothing. I don't have a lot of faith that this will move forward, but if you're going to believe that it is, $3.2 million in this economy with the location that we're about to have, it's not going to take 10 years for 10 Street, by the way. It'll happen a lot quicker. And I don't want to sit here 25 years from now. People say, who was in charge to allow for this limited view project to go in that prime location, one of the last prime locations along 995? And who made that decision? I don't want it to be me. And I would hope you wouldn't want it to be you because it's very um, short-sighted in my opinion. Mr. Parnas, we already have a hotel, Doubletree, has no problem with being up against I-95. I am not under the delusion to think that we're going to build a Taj Mahal. I don't care what people have great ideas for. It's going to come in there. It's going to be massive. Yes, there are going to be impacts. But anything that goes in there is going to create jobs. I'm not impressed with the job creating by this limited usage that's coming forward right now. I'm not impressed with the dollar amount, though I think it is significant. But I look back at what we've already been through to get here. And I've been here long enough to know that I'm, I'm disappointed, disgusted, I am more hopeful that our residents will do the right thing and go through a referendum and approve something that will be in their best interest as opposed to something that we're looking at right now to force through because it's the best deal on the table. It's the best deal on the table because we've had nothing else moving forward. We've had limitations. We've had partners that I don't feel have been doing the best job of selling that site and getting that moving forward. And I'm not talking about necessarily people involved right now. This is not a shot of people's trust in any way, shape, or form. This is talking about the relationship that we've had with FAU, with Florida, and what has happened with that site. It has been a failure. It was a, it was a great effort. It was a good idea, but it failed. And it needs to stop right now. And I, I think if we are so limited in our, in our scope on this with the city and what this could be, I'm disappointed. There's a lot more money that can be made up, a lot more longer term. You're locking us in for eight years on this parcel. Is this really the best that can be done there? I don't think so. I don't think in the end, the question is, is not significantly or not answered for me to, to convince me that this is the best possible use for this property. I don't believe that. And I think we need to unshackle ourselves. We need to be true to what the residents originally put in there. They're not going to get a research and development part based on the language that was in there that they were probably sold on that. And you could tell the way it was sold to them. They're not going to get that now with this project. They're not going to get that at all. The relationship with FAU has been a failure, unfortunately, in this location. We have an opportunity to give them a hope for a better opportunity in the future. Yes, do we have something concrete right now? No, we don't. But I had something concrete a year ago that fell apart. I'm not trusting that this is the best deal. I don't think it's the right thing for the city of Deerfield Beach. I think it would be a mistake for us to prove that, to, to approve it tonight. Questions you have? Yes, sir. What do we do if they turn the referendum down like they did in Boca? What do we do with it then? Turn what down? You mean, in other words, for us to sell that property yeah. to somebody else? Yeah. Well, then again, you've given, the, you've given the voters a chance to have their say on something. Give the power to the voters to do that, something we fight for. Okay, good. what do we do with the land if they say no? How about we ask them what they want us to do with the land? As opposed to just approving a project that happens to be in front of us. For next, the next meeting. Okay. <laughs> Let's put it in their hands. Let's give them the opportunity to make that decision. Let's give us the opportunity to remove the shackles that we've had on this project, on this property, to make it free and clear and give us the opportunity to see what's out there and let the voters tell us what they want to do with that, as opposed to us telling them this is the best deal that's on the table. I've lost faith after the last extension that I granted that I've been, the last three extensions that we've granted, that I've been against, with hopes that there was still an opportunity to give them what they originally had voted for, which is the research and development part. The space that's allowed remaining here is not enough. It is a short-sighted vision, and it's for a small amount of money when you look at the length of what we're tying ourselves into. It's not the best possible use. And I think the things that were talked about with, you know, Commissioner Grosky brought up Manor Highway Park and all these other things, there's a lot of things that can be done. There are a lot of things that can't be done now based on the way that is. Let's not limit ourselves. Let's give us the opportunity. We go out for an RFP. 
people's trust may come in with an RFP and, and present themselves then. I, I just don't believe this is in the best interest of the city here. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as I said before, to me, you have to look at the relationship that you had with Parker, and I understand that there have been some issues. And I remember you did reluctant to go for it. But I think in any business plan, um, things do change. Um, I feel a commitment from people's trust. I believe that they want to make this site work for the city of Deerfield Beach as much as they want to work, want to make it work for themselves. And I think that um, in this situation, that they actually deserve this, as hard as it may be. I feel that the commitment that they're willing to make, because they are saying, listen, uh, there are some challenges here, and we're willing to put forward uh, money. That money represents a commitment. It's a commitment. They're not just asking for us to blindly be able to give this extension. And I think that in this situation, at least for me, that it is the right thing to do. And, you know, uh, listen, in the end, it may have been that we could have done this, but we could say that about anything. You can look, always look back and say, well, you know, if we had did this or we did that, this would have been the situation. But we're talking about what we have right now in front of us. What kind of business uh, people have people's trust been in the city of Deerfield Beach? And I think that they've been such that they deserve a chance to be able to, uh, to have this extension. And I just think it's the right thing to do. And, you know, just like it is, uh, Commissioner Drosky said that, uh, you know, we're here to make the tough situation. But guess what? Sometimes we differ in making those tough situations. So I think it's the right thing to do. And uh, the points that have been made, you're right. There, there's, there's, uh, we have been making those extensions, but I really believe that in the end, they're going to make it work. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Any other commission comments? I will, I, will, I, I will say this. You talk about looking at the relationship. I do look at the relationship, and I'm sad about it. And you should be too, because look what we were promised, look what we got. So, so that to me is something that, that carries a lot of weight in this situation. I had a lot of faith the last time. Look what happened. Almost immediately, slap in the face. And now suddenly these prominent people that, that seem to know what they're doing magically cut this entire project in half. We're going to have faith again to move forward with that? I don't. I don't share that same faith that you do, and I'm not swayed by $3.2 million to convince me that that makes it any better. It doesn't, in my opinion. It's, sold, it's selling us short on, that, on this project and, and what that property could be. Look around in Deerfield Beach. It's a unique piece of property. There's nothing like that again, and we're going to be stuck with it for 80 years. 80 years. I think that is something that when you look back at your legacy as you sit up here, that's not something I want to be attached with or limited to. That's my but the other side of that, Mayor, is that in 20, 30 years, people could have said, you know, what could have been there? There was something tangible. There was something there that could have worked, and that commission chose not to do it. And we may not end up with something good. So just because it is a prime piece of property, that is not to say that in the end, we're going to end up, you know, with the golden goose. Not at all. It's a gamble. That's what, that's what we're saying. Yeah, they're, they're out there. But is it going to happen? It's the, the, you know, if we look at, you know, if someone was to say, listen, there is $500 million, that's a half a billion dollars, but I'm going to give you this amount of money right now, and you might get that $500 million. You don't know that you're going to get it. It may happen, but you don't know that you're going to get it. The one thing I do know is it's not going to stay big. And the reason it stayed vacant is because of this relationship and this lease. And it may not stay vacant. And you're right, it won't stay vacant, but it doesn't mean that it's going to work out in our favor as to the way that we can see it. It's just how you look at it. That is true. Commissioner Grosky. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Mayor. Um, listen, clearly three of my colleagues have a different vision than than I do for, for this city. And, and that's very regrettable and and the voters will judge them um, based upon that. 
And the voters that judged this issue back in 2000, they voted 77.77%. I looked it up, 77.77% to vote in favor of the lease for the research development park. 22.23% uh, obviously voted against. So rounding up 78%, this commission is turning its back on 78% of the residents of this city that voted. If you're gonna stare at those residents and you're gonna tell them that you're turning your back on them, then you do that and you tell the press that and everybody else, but I am not. I think that this is something that we need to go forward um, with a much bolder plan. And I'll use that word till the end of time, bold, 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 and I'm not afraid to use it because I have a very different vision for this city going forward and I'm not going to turn my back on 78% of the residents that voted for this, <clears throat> that voted for this, that now we're gonna politically um, just make go away uh, because we're having 3.2 million dangled over our heads, which in the long run is going to be nothing. And yes, I'm getting you know passionate and my blood pressure is going up on this because I'm a resident just like the rest of my colleagues here. You know, I, I want nothing but the best for this city. And you have to look at that property and look at that location. What could be there, folks? Is this what you want to see? You saw the renderings. Do you want that two-story building there that you're not going to be able to see from I-95 when this is going to be a much more bustling city in the, in the future? Look at Hillsborough Boulevard, for example, just by way of comparison. That stretch between I-95 and Dixie Highway is, is, is changing um, right before our eyes. I bet you five years from now, you won't recognize that corridor, how much more improved that's going to be. Southwest 10th Street is going to be the exact same way. We cannot stop progress from coming forward. So why not have the residents say what their progress is? Why not have the residents decide what they want there? Whether it's office, medical, whatever, all that the RFP procedure does is it brings forward the proposals and then the residents get to decide, not us, the politicians. Give the residents the ability to decide. They decided the first time, don't take that decision out of their hands. This is the residents to decide, not us as the politicians. Um, this is not something that we should be deciding that the residents need to decide. And so I'm going to end on, on that point. I don't need to reiterate everything that I said before. Um, but again, even if your vision is different, let the residents decide what that vision should be, not us. Commissioner sure that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's really not... I don't agree with your comments at all, Commissioner Drosky. First of all, for 25 years, it's been a vacant piece of property. So why don't you just, you know what, we're running out of land for the cemetery. Why don't you just put another cemetery there? I'm sorry, but you know what? That's great that they had the vision 20 years ago to put a great property there. But for 25 years, that property has stayed vacant and the city has gotten $25 for it in the last 25 years. I'm sorry, but it's great to have vision. I, I applaud your passion, but sometimes you have to look at the reality of the situation as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll just say that it is, it, it is, I have more hope for the city of Deerfield Beach. I have more belief in the city of Deerfield Beach. And I think this falls short of where we could be. Um, and I've been here for a long time. Yeah. Go ahead. How many residents are here? Raise your hand. How many think the mayor is right? We should leave it to the voters. Raise your hands. How many think we should approve this right now? How many are employed by People's Trust? <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, if you're not employed by People's Trust, how many think we should approve it? Come on, Dennis. Not employed by People's Trust. Really. And how many oh. disapprove of it that are not employees of People's Trust? Thank you. Is your straw ballot done? <laughs> My straw ballot's done. It doesn't help me. I'm caught in the middle here. Well, um, I am really caught in the middle here. Uh, I'm going to say something now, Bill. I've been on this bench for five years now. 
and I've come to know Todd as being the tightest money pincher for the city for five years. He would rather eat a garbage can than spend a nickel of the city's money. And I know you. You've been for the people all along. And as much as I like this project, I'm going to change my vote and go with you. Because you and Todd, let the people decide. Let's put it to a referendum. Let you decide what you think should be done with that property. Should we sell it? Or should we hang on to it and try to make a research lab out of it? That's probably the question on, on the ballot. Permission to sell the property. Open it up for public comment. It was already open for public comment. Remember, I sat there and asked you guys to come forward. You guys didn't want to. I opened it up for public comment. You will? Well, you're not the public because I believe you're part and parcel of this, sir. So you key ask for it. Yeah, she can come right up, sir. Thank you. It's an expression. Uh, being caught between a rock and a hard place. The rock being I'm sorry. It, 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 I mean, the rock, I, I correct me. I need your name and address for the record. I'm oh, sorry. George Schaefer, 1400 South Ocean Boulevard. And you are the owner of yes. People, People, People yes. Trust. And that's why trust. we're letting you be part of this to talk. And I appreciate it. And I think a good part of this meeting is your fault, man. When you took my phone call, which is very nice of you, mm -hmm. gave me your honest opinion. And we spoke about 20 minutes. And I have to respect that. You're speaking for your opinion for whatever reason. And I have my own opinion because I want to do one thing. Get, lit, get rid of the blight on that corner. And that's what I want to do. And create 200 jobs for the city minimum because RRP alone has about 150 jobs as headquarters. And I also want to Give a, I want to name the project Innovation Park of Deerfield Beach. That's going to be lit up. Why am I saying Innovation Park of Deerfield Beach? Because there'll be spaces for 2,000 square feet, about six or seven of them. And the people come in there are new entrepreneurs having an idea of what they want to do. As you probably know, I own a small nail polish company, OPI. What does that have to do with this? I started at 600 square feet. And I sold the company for almost a billion dollars 32 years later. I didn't know it was going to be in nail polish. And that's the way innovation is all about. You go from dental supplies with acrylic nails to nail polish. It's an opportunity. I'm a refugee here. I'm Hungarian. I was born here when I was 10 years old without a penny. And this is a land of opportunity, not a speculation, because with all due respect, what could be, would be, should be, doesn't work in my book. A fact of me, and I don't care about contracts. When I tell you I'm gonna give you $3.2 million, that's my word, and you can check it against anybody else. I didn't force these people to come here, and one requirement, if you're not in Deerfield Beach, don't come here. But it's completely voluntary. Believe it or not, I would, I would pledge on that. I didn't force anybody to come here. I think you and the Commission of Drosky are making a tragic mistake. What? I've been here driving here for seven years. I took a gamble on this city by building a $13 million garage I could build 152,000 square foot building next to me. I've been fighting it. I've been trying to do everything in my power to get it done. And I haven't gotten anywhere. And by the way, when we talk about this building to be off of 95, you can't see any kind of signage off of 95 in this building. I don't think we're gonna to have the to right to build another sign like that food place across when it said exit now. 
I, I ate there once. It was interesting. So I, I think, honestly, when you say roll the dice, I have a show in Las Vegas every year, and I don't roll the dice. I go there committed, and I and I, I don't gamble. It's not part of my uh, my 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 being. And yet, at the same time, I own an insurance company, the biggest gamble of my life, which is kind of crazy. But it's a gamble that I'm employing 300 plus people, and I think I take care of them pretty well. You could ask them. And when I do good, they do good. So I, I have one really hope. I want to give you jobs. There will be at least 200 jobs there if you count 150 from RRP. At least another 100 jobs would be there. If I get the approval, I'm going to try to get a, a first aid kind of thing on one corner, which I think Vietnam has spoke about. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. And I, I spoke to a couple of the uh, people on the board. But I think you are making a mistake. Look what you have done. And I don't go back 20 years. And when I say between the rock and the water, well, 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 that property has been empty. Yes. And the problem that I'm in, I'm between Florida and you. And I'm screwed. I think that's legal word. I don't want to say that. Anymore. Because of this, why are you punishing me and the people of Deerfield and that man's district? Because you have an in for Florida? Does that make sense? I would say I'm really not happy about what I'm hearing today. And if you want to keep me away, by all means, you have to vote. Thank you. This isn't personal about Florida. There's, I don't know who Florida is individually, but I can tell you right now. I know who Andrew Duffel is and I know who he works for, but he's not part. He's been handcuffed as well as anybody else on this project. But much like the conversation you and I had, I don't feel you, I, I did feel like I was hoodwinked the last time after working for the approval. I think you're an honorable man. That's not the issue. This isn't personal at all. This is about what I feel is in the best interest of the city of Deerfield Beach. And I live here. And I've been here a long time. Not just in office a long time, but I've been here in the city for a very long time. So, in my opinion, you heard it. And I appreciate you sharing your, your opinion on it as well. Is there anyone else, Mr. Mealy, that you'd like to come up and have speak from your group? Hey, you want some residents? No, this is, we've already closed it to the public. They have the opportunity. This is for anybody who's attached to your team. Anyone want to say something or no? I don't think we have anybody else to speak. Okay, thank you. Vice Mayor Preston. You know, I've set up here uh, for many years and uh, I've gone through some very difficult and challenging uh, debates. And if there is a project in any one uh, commissioner's district, you know, I always want to hear from that person on that perspective in that district as to why we think it's good and to speak to them. And I've seen that come from this desk and that courtesy, not, not any of my colleagues, Ask me, this is in your district. Tell me why you like it. Tell me what's good. How does it benefit the city? Is it should be just a district thing? Absolutely not. It should be what is good for the city. But what I have seen over the years is that a an understanding where that district commissioner, you know, gives a chance, you know, to tell his side from the perspective of how it is good for his community. I can tell you, and I'm going to say it again, when People's Trust came in right from the very start, they helped in our community with some projects, projects that was essential. I will tell you, right across, if you remember, right across from uh, 
uh, people's trust is Deerfield Beach High School. In so many ways, that was just a simple break. I actually came to the city and said, we need to clean this area up. It's the only public high school in the city of Deerfield Beach, and it looked filthy. No attention given to it. I created and wanted a project for that area, and people trust stepped right in, with the idea also to create some programs to help some kids come from uh, uh, Deerfield Beach High School, because everybody's not cut out for college, but to, to try to you know, uh, craft a way that we could give kids jobs coming out of high school to provide uh, some employment for them. But, but again, you know, nobody tonight has said this is Commissioner Preston, the Vice Mayor Preston District, talk to us, talk to this commission. So in, in essence, you're going to do what you want to do anyway. But I will tell you to me, and I'm not going to change my mind, this is a good project for the city of Deerfield Beach, and it's a good project for this district. I believe I started with, with all of our comments with, with, with the district. You, you, I did want to hear that. Yeah. But it, and you're, you're certainly on a situation where it's a district issue in particular. It carries a lot of weight. This is unique. And when the referendum went out, it wasn't just district two, it was citywide. But I said that. I yeah. said that. So that's why it's a little different. But I understand what you're saying. I certainly respect your. I, 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 I have are. seen other people here where that question here that is your district. What do you think about it? So I've seen that done. I'm just saying that it wasn't done with me tonight. That's all I'm saying. I thought that's what I did when I opened it. Well, you did, you did, but you did, but, but you didn't ask it as I just stated. Okay. That, 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 that did not happen. It certainly was not my intent to. Yeah, I believe that. I don't think yeah. it was. Commissioner Kudak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, um, this is why I enjoy being on this dais with all of you. Uh, none of this is personal. We all have a, a, a vision and a, uh, a vested interest in this city. Uh, we're all residents here. We've all been here for a long time. Uh, and I value each of your opinions. Um, whether I agree with them or not is beside the fact. Uh, the, the one thing that we do have to look at um, and I know that we are looking at it, is you know, who is the, the entity that is proposing this development? Is it a known entity and a trusted entity? If this was JM Family Enterprises, would we be having the same conversation? I don't know. I'm not asking anybody to, to, to ans answer that question either. Uh, but this is a valued member of our community who has proven himself uh, he's also stated that within five days after the approval, he'll be putting a million dollars into the city's pockets. And then up to, again, 3.2 million when it's all said and done. And if he does not comply, he is in default. The city keeps the money and we can move on with the property uh, as if it was ours all along. Uh, so I'm not sure why the apprehension, this is, uh, a possible win-win solution uh, and a situation for the city. Uh, I understand, you know, the mayor's concern, heck, for 25, 20 years, uh, this property has laid vacant. And for 18 of those years, FAU or FARDA has not done anything to promote that property. I understand all of that. Um, and I'd be salty as well. But at the same time, I think we have to look at what's best for that area and this city. And it's my vision and, and my opinion that this is the best opportunity for this property because we do not know what's gonna happen in three years or four years or 10 years. Um, and again, a bird in a hand is worth two in the bush. And, and that is the reason why I'm still in full support of this project. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hudak. Any other comments? I'm giving everyone enough time to speak on this as much as they want. I'm really torn. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very tough to you make a motion. Okay. okay. I'm going to make a motion to approve. I just want to say something very quick. Um, I know when we were here last year, it was the Seventh Amendment. And I remember you all talking about how disappointed you were about how long it was taken. But keep in mind, for the first six amendments, we weren't here. It was somebody else totally different. 
We just came here last year. So I know this is our second time here, but please remember the first six times had nothing to do with us. It was a company that's long gone. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion uh, that this extension uh, be granted. I'll second Just clarification. Is that a motion to approve the ordinance? I'm yes, sorry. it is a motion to approve the ordinance. As is my second. Commissioner Drosky, I was going to make an opposite motion, so we have to go through this one we first. Have a motion. No, I believe. Is that a second for you, Commissioner Kubat? Yes, sir. Okay. Right. We'll call. Or Commissioner Drosky? No. Commissioner Hodak? Yes. Commissioner Parnes? No. Vice President? Yes. And Mayor Dance? No. We are now at comments by administration and legal. No further, no further comments. I'll turn it over to the city manager. I'm sorry, we're still in the middle of the meeting. It's, it's right. okay. I no, we're in the middle of the meeting. Ma'am, you have to move. I understand. I just want you to know we're not here in 2009. We're here. We're in the middle of the meeting. We're going to ask you to be removed. It's okay. 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 You we can have her removed, please, yes, so we can conduct our meeting. You don't need to remove me. Thank you. And this is who we want to get business with, folks. Look, can we continue on? We, we, we still have an agenda here, please. No, no, we, we moved on. Can we get a comments and stuff and talk about it? Yeah. We're at comments by administration, is that correct? Correct. I have no comments uh, this evening, Mayor. Uh, I, I can, unless. I can turn over uh, Pioneer Days to anyone of, uh, on the commission who wants to speak about that event that's happening this weekend, but I, I would like that to be brought up. I can refrain from stealing any thunder on that. Thank you. Legal. No comments, Mayor, for tonight. We're now on comments by Mayor and City Commission. If you'd like to say what you're going to say as far as what swayed you or anything else you'd like to say. What swayed me the most was the fact that you left it to the voters. Um, I'm a firm believer that when it comes to major decisions such as this, especially what's happened over the last year since I've been on the commission with this, one delay after another delay after another default after another delay. Although I believe this serious now, I am a firm believer, leave it to the voters, who made the point, let the voters decide. There are issues that I have that I want the same thing that I think are important enough to let the voters decide. Your vote counts. And I don't want to see anybody take that away from you. That, that's what's sweet. Ben, I will do everything in my power to get something built there to help your district. You know how I feel about you and your district. But some things just don't sit right. That's all you have? That's it. Thank you, Commissioner. We started with District 3. Oh, I didn't know I was speaking for my district. Yes, you are. Okay, wait, can I? Uh, I once we voted, that item was over. That's why we moved on. That okay, I'm sorry. I'm trying to say the first. Any other comments? Yes, I do. Go ahead. I have an item coming up at the next meeting, gentlemen, in which I'm asking you to send something to the voters. It's a change in our charter. We can be bold and say, all right, we can vote no, and the item's dead. But I think it's important enough when it comes to the city charter to present it to the voters and let them decide. I want you to think about that between now and the next meeting, because that's all I'm asking that the proposal, the ordinance that I've worked out with legal is a change in the charter with term limits. And I want the voters to make the decision what they think. 
They think we're doing a great job and maybe want to extend this one more term. Fine. They think we're doing a rotten job. Throw us out. There's no guarantee, even if it happens. Let's assume the voters for a minute say you can have a third term. Bill, you beat an incumbent. I beat an incumbent. Ben, you beat an incumbent. No guarantee that if you run for one term, two terms, three terms, you're going to win. That's one. Two, nobody's forcing somebody to run for a third term. But if the public wants it and the commission is together, somebody does want to run for a third term, let the voters decide that, whether it's a good idea or not. Because whether we have two terms or three terms, those that don't do a good job don't get to come back. Period, no matter how many terms we have. Second, we're in the minority. Many like Pembroke Pines, Pompano, Coconut Creek, no limits. Tudy has been mayor for a long time. She's been on the board for 20 years. Pembroke Pines, my friend who sits on the planning council, Mr. Castillo, has been there forever. I think he was born on the commission there. So they leaving it up to the voters to me is important. They say no, okay, they say no. But if they say yes, I mean, let's face it, Bill, I'll pay you and Todd a ta 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 compliment. Your, your voters hated you so much, you ran on the post. They obviously, they felt you did a good job. I taught you too, that nobody would even try to run against you. But, if we don't change the charter, in three years, 60% of this commission, gone, by law, finished. The rookies have to deal with a $220 million budget. I think the voters need to decide this issue. And that's what I'm asking the commission to do on, at the next meeting and the second reading. Let the voters decide. That's what you convinced me with tonight, your argument. You said, let the voters decide. How could I say no to you when I'm asking on an issue I think is important to let the voters decide? That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Um, you can jump around. Let's go to District 4. Oh. Um, thank you, Mayor. I only have one thing tonight. Um, thank you, Commissioner Pardas. I will do the research. I have not seen the text of your proposed ordinance. Uh, I have seen the backup to it though. Uh, I have read it, so I will be sure to do the research and I'll be prepared for the next meeting. The only Great. thing that I would like to add is that March 5th is my next Saturday office hours. You can either sign up directly with me or through the city manager's office. And uh, that's all I have tonight. I think the other topics will be covered by my colleagues. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. Let's go to District 1. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A uh, couple of things. First of all, resident brought up the fact that uh, she is under the opinion that a, an entire condo was purchased to be an Airbnb. So I really hope that uh, the city manager and the city attorney research that to find out the validity, the validity of that rumor. Um, that would be very, very uh, concerning. Don't know if we as a city can do anything about that, but um, it just shows you where this is headed. Uh, as we know, uh, Pioneer Days coming up this weekend, as well as the Festival of Arts. So we've got a full, full uh, celebration happening. Uh, we've got a parade on Saturday starting at 10 o'clock, uh, and then it goes all the way over to Sunday. I believe I, the uh, uh, at the end of Saturday, we're going to even have fireworks over at the beach. So looking forward to seeing everybody there and uh, looking forward to have a great time. And that's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first, at Bethlehem Church, actually started tonight, the Florida uh, East Coast Baptist Association is holding the 119th annual session um, at Bethlehem, I say right here, here to you. and uh, the pastor uh, that's moderating here is uh, Pastor uh, uh, Toby Gilbert. Right. 
and uh, he's going to be speaking uh, tomorrow at 7 p.m. Uh, all of uh, all of uh, the my colleagues are welcome to that, invited to that, in fact. Um, so please come out. The next thing is that, unfortunately, uh, we're going to be uh, losing Mr. Marlowe. Uh, Mr. Marlowe is going to be reassigned to the Arthur Ashe building. He just did a tremendous job here uh, in the city of Deerfield Beach. Uh, I'm going to ask um, the uh, city manager if we could get Mr. Marlowe, uh, a, you know, give him something for his appreciate, you know, uh, uh, appreciation for the great job that he's done in the city of Deerfield Beach uh, with the kids and uh, for our great city. Just a, a little bit. Uh, we have a Super Bowl champion at some point. I'd like to bring him before the commission. Uh, Brandon Powell is a city of Deerfield Beach uh, person. Uh, he played, yes, for the Packer Rattler. Uh, yay, Packer Rattler. <laughs> uh, he played for the Packer Rattlers, Deerfield Beach High School, went to the University of Florida, uh, played for the Dolphins for a while, uh, went to uh, went to Los Angeles Rams, and today, the city of Deerfield Beach has a Super Bowl champion. Now, we'll take great pleasure when he's in town, um, you know, to introduce him to this commission. It's two years in a row. Black Heritage Banquet is going to be on the 26th uh, of this month over at the Double Tree. If you are looking to participate in that, uh, I heard the tickets uh, are running out. And, uh, so if you're looking to go to that, you better call it. And I don't know that they haven't run out by now, but I would call immediately if you have any interest in attending. And um, that's it for me, man. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, look, obviously, we get in these big debates, and if you did, as you can see what happens at the end of the meeting. People show their colors at the end when they don't get what they want. And I hope it's a lesson for all of us. We just saw that here tonight. You know, it, 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 I know it's high stakes, and, and I understand that. I certainly respect the opinion of everybody up here. I mean, we've all been swayed by each other's arguments up here on the dots. I think I was against the original expansion of the Tinker Center. You guys convinced me that it was the right thing to do. The residents convinced me. So I, it, that, that's what happens. And, it, and it, you know, it's not, none of this has been personal. It's about what I think is the best thing to move forward. And I think that's what we all make our opinions on because believe me if it was personal you would see a lot of things happening that you know <laughs> personalities would come out but we don't do that because we make our decisions based on what we think is in the best interest of the people we reference and I, I didn't, all of us do that we have a lot of big events coming up uh there's too many really to, to mention um and this was an exhausting argument so I, I will leave it at that um i will say and i mentioned briefly um the tragedy that stoneman douglas the in, intro of this yesterday one of the things that people may or may not remember, and I hope they do remember, is that we lost one of our residents during that with um, Mr. Beagle, who was uh, killed in, in the um, Stoneman Douglas shooting. And I hope that with all the things that are going on out there, with all the rhetoric and with all the people that um, seem to uh, so easily to get angry, that we all just realize that we should be kind and that people um, and people need help when it comes to mental illness and let's hope that they get it and we hope that we support organizations to do that. Losing Dr. Marlowe from the Deerfield Beach High School as the principal is a big blow to the city of Deerfield Beach because he's been an outstanding um, leader over there and uh, we're, we're glad we were lucky to have had him and uh, it's a shame that he's leaving to move on to greener pastures but it's well deserved for him. So uh, I believe that is all I have. I know I'm probably missing something. Oh, there is one thing. I've heard from the city manager and from others that our city employees are getting a lot of grief in areas in which they interact directly with the public. The city peer is one of them. We have rules that are put in place, whether it be masks or whatever it may be, or showing ID, whether you're a resident or not, to get onto the pier. The feedback that I've heard is that we have people going on racial tirades 
towards our employees at the pew. Now, that can't be tolerated at all. So in my opinion, while we can't pass a rule that limits free speech, what people want to say, I think we should make these people famous. I think we should put a camera with a recording at that pier. So when someone decides they want to use a racial slur to address one of our city employees because they're not happy with something, I'll be happy to put their face in that video on my Facebook page and pump it out to anybody I can to let them know that that kind of behavior, you're going to be held accountable in some way, shape, or form. I've talked to the city manager about that being a possibility. I haven't talked to the city attorney if that comes into issues. I can see by his hair sticking up on the back of his neck that that might be an issue. But I feel very strongly about it because it shouldn't be tolerated. Our employees, no one deserves to have that done. And people who are like that, I, I'd love to expose them to the public. They might not care, but you know what? I think, I think they need to be held accountable in some way, shape, or form. Let their employers decide whether or not that's the kind of people they want um, working for them. With that, I think that's all the comments I have for tonight. Um, Is there anything I'm missing, Mr. City Manager? If I could just, on uh, the Pioneer Days, we are looking forward to the parade on uh, Saturday morning at 10 a.m. There will be uh, vendors, arts, uh, crafts activities all throughout the day on uh, throughout the day on Saturday and Sunday. We have our fireworks Saturday night at uh, 9 p.m. And we have our first ever uh, bonfire on the beach to conclude our pioneer days on Sunday evening starting from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. I want to thank staff for taking that idea and doing something. Thank you. Bill? Yes, sir. I'm going to apologize for not attending, but if you don't, just getting over COVID. And I do not know you had it. I'm glad you're better. Yes. Not I, a problem. But I, I have hermited for two weeks in my house, at, which was difficult. But I went to two different labs and tested negative in each of the two labs. Rather than just trust one, I went to two, two, two separate labs a week apart just to be sure that I was clear. Glad you were better. Oh, glad you were better. I survived. City manager. And I had a, a suspicion that uh, Commissioner Preston would speak about the Black Heritage Bank, but I also want to include that, um, although I think we are at capacity, we might have the ability to go up another table or two uh, there, Commissioner, so we might be adding some capacity to that uh, that event. But I'll also include a tribute to uh, Martin Luther, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And uh, I understand that some of the um, entertainment that we have planned for that evening, I don't want to give it away, it's going to be uh, quite amazing. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that event as well. Excellent. Thank you so much. I know there's a lot of events we're missing. If anybody's still listening to this hour, go to our website, check out all the great events. I think we're all tired. From so thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Second. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 aye.